Hello, hello. This is going to be a double header, a two parter, as they say, making an animation from start to finish in Affinity Designer for iPad on the desktop into Character Animator, into After Effects, and into my bank account. <laughs> This project, I recorded all of this project because I think this is my swan song or my, my seagulls song because I am hanging up my hat at least for a, a couple of years while I get back into making comics. Clamnotes.com has been retooled to, to back, back where it started, a personal website for my comic work and stop. I'm stopping being an agency. For about six years I've been taking on all manner of clients, all manner of annoying clients, you know who you are. You're horrible at what you do. You're horrible to deal with. Uh, I have some great clients. This this particular animation that we're making today is for my favorite client. They're fantastic. They're cool. They get me. I get them. There's never any problems with them. But the majority of clients are just a pain in the hole. I am working on a couple of new projects in the comic field. And please go to clamos.com. Get on the mailing list because... I'm sure by the time you're watching this, the book has been released. Links below. Cheers. So this is the script from the client, which I rescued from the bin this morning. So I'll take these, make little notes on them, send them back, and then move on to sketches. And you'll notice that the first character design is done in Procreate and not Affinity. Even though I am Mr. Affinity Designer. I'm sure all Mr. Affinity Designer and Mrs. Affinity Designers do the same. The apps are great, but for immediate sketching, you can't compete with Procreate. And away we go. So I'm gonna start off in real time. Now here's another quick sketch that I made, and this is a very stiff and awkward looking sketch, but we'll get back to that later. What I'm doing here is making the artboard background a nice blue. Then I'll take the bitmap layer and make that 25% opacity so we can draw over and under it. Now, as I, say, as I was saying, this is a, a stiff sketch, but it was for me to see what components, how many components I need to make to actually make them move. Um, but it's good to get the crap sketches out of the way at the very beginning. Because a mistake that a lot of people make, especially when they're, they're drawing tra traditionally with pencil and paper, is to keep rubbing out or erasing their mistakes. But it's good to keep your mistakes on the screen so you can see how far or how much you've evolved and what you don't want to see and the, the final characters that, that we use are a lot better than this so mostly I'm using the pen tool with the Apple pencil and uh, yeah you can you can build up a great speed you can do the point by point which I'm doing here click 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 or you can use the pencil like that lovely when you're making eyes for a character um, it's different for animation for a character design they can be two different sizes like here you can see I made see that I resized one pupil when you're making when you're doing it for animation that's that's not recommended but at this stage I am gonna send I just want to send these off to the client for approval so I can get cracking on animating so the process goes um, the script the storyboards, which we'll cover later. Or sorry, the script, initial character designs, then the storyboards, then the final character designs. Then once that's approved, you get into the rigging, which is making them animate, sorry, making them uh, ready for animation. Now later on in this video, and I think it's gonna be in part two, um, we use Adobe Character Animator and After Effects to do the actual animation. And I've said it before, I'll say it again, I am a mediocre designer, mediocre animator, but I've made a good living consistently for years by knowing what shortcuts to take, when to bob, when to wave, when to whip a camel's arse with a belt, rock over London, rock over Chicago. But what I'm saying is you don't need to be the best to uh, get away with it, you know? So there we, go. there we go. You can see from a distance, they look passable. So in the, in the finished animation, we have two sets of models. We have the up-close ones, 
and then we have the um, the ones which talk at a distance and you can see here that the legs in order for, for them to stand beside each other in the scene it doesn't work because the the fat one's legs are too it, it just doesn't work and what I'm trying to do here is just figure out the proportions but when we plop them into a, a 19, 1920 by 1080 scene I get a much better sense of how big the arms need to be and the pr pr proportions in relation to each other so again I use one for close-ups and one for uh, the distance shots this is a, a safety what do you call it a safety handling video so I'm just plopping in a little quick man to show where the human will be these two characters will be talking beside a human beside a man and telling them how to pick up the box correctly uh, I took some great shortcuts with the with the with the human character by not animating him at all so I just put him into different positions and just cut look at it that's a cool effect on the uh, on the fat boards um, chest you get the pen tool and you can just draw those squiggly feathers in it, I took this project on because uh, as I was saying this could be could be the last one I'll be doing for a while but the two the two voice actors are uh, from Dublin as as I am and I thought it'd be fun and Jesus Christ if I if I have to hear the the two character actors again I'll jump out a window I cannot listen to that always happens but there's something particularly particularly grating about it's about the skinny fella's voice mostly because he sounds like me I think or it sounds like most people I know from Dublin but yeah that's that's always the worst thing about making a big animation project is that the, the playback you have to keep playing back and listening to the same clip could be it could be a couple of hundred times you know that's not an exaggeration and now we're doing some details on the the fat one I call them skinny and fat not politically correct I know but why stop now you know you know the Beano um, the kids comic famous I think it's, I think it was the first issue came out in 1945 or 46 famous UK kids comic and there's a strip in it called the Bastry Kids which I loved and the very first comic I ever made was a Bastry Kids comic. And uh, I started to read my kid. He was three at the time. Some old Beano's that I had here. And he, he loves Bastry Kids. He loves Smithy. He loves all that nonsense. But what I'm trying to say is that the Beano has been shaken up and uh, politically correctized. And there was a character called Fatty. And they changed his name to Freddy. You know, because he's, you know, you don't want to call a kid fat, which is fair enough. And, like, I do sort of agree with it. I always thought it was, like, they've brought in some cringy characters. But the, for me, the, the final straw was when there's another character called Spotty, who had all these, uh, I always thought they were freckles, but maybe they were supposed to be acne or whatever. They changed his name to, uh, I can't remember. So the fatty became Freddy. They put in two new characters, two girls, and they changed Spotty's name to, uh, I don't know, Eddie or whatever. And that's when I cancelled my subscription, I have to say. So what I'm saying is, I call this character fat and skinny. And will I be pilloried for that? Probably. I don't know. I don't know anymore. Um, at this stage... The characters are looking good and you can see again that compared to the the initial sketches this looks very solid and the whole process took 50, 50 55 minutes 55 minutes uh, judging by all the clips that I recorded it took 55 minutes to, to do all this which is not bad so like the, the most important thing is the character animation and that was actually the easiest part for me the hardest part for this project was um, so I use character animator to save time but because that uses it's a thing called dynamic link which connects character animator to um, after effects it just slowed down the file so much and the render time was was horrible 
so again when you're making a video you're playing you're playing things back you're rendering things like I know for this it took 15 full renders you watch the whole thing again so you're watching scene by scene then you have to watch the whole thing again and again and again that's the part that drives me crazy this part is actually enjoyable and fun and in the next part of the video we're going to get into all the little sneaky animation tricks that I use to uh, speed things up because you could spend your life putting in details or, or using tricks that nobody nobody cares about and it's a waste of time and I pride myself on being incredibly <laughs> well I say lazy efficient how about that efficient you know I'm using the corner tool there see that that's I love that effect and uh, yeah looking good so the next stage for me is to bring this over into the desktop version of affinity and uh, once I get client approval start rigging them and that part I'm not I'm not crazy about you see I start putting details on his beak but in the end uh, in the end he had they had no characters <laughs> they had no details on their beak for animation reasons but at this at this stage I just want the client to uh, to sign off and speed speed things up beautiful rainy day here in Spain it's been raining for two weeks and it's it's horrible you know I didn't come here for this I am I'm behind on my my uh, planting schedule I'll get into that some other day but I have I have a farm here and yeah this the rain has messed me up so oh this this messed me up see what I did here I put a, a, a brightness adjustment layer on the fat fella um, and this ultimately messed me up because I had to recreate him. So he looks great in, in that beautiful uh, gray brownie color. He, he looks great. But then when I went to rig him, I had to remake all of, all of his bits. We'll, we'll come up to that. We'll come back to that later. Now I'm doing all the tiny little kill details. Just clipping in um, rough shapes into even rougher shapes. I am the sloppiest of the sloppiest. So we'll leave it there for now. In the next video, we're going to make the storyboards. We're going to rig them. We're going to animate them in, in Adobe Character Animator. So stay tuned for the next part. Smash that like button. Smash subscribe. Then smash me in the face for saying this. Yeah.